Vintage Perfection. That's what I call this little teeny six ounce lens from Voigtlander that I've been shooting with for what, six weeks now? I posted a review of it over at my website, stefafoto.com. But today I want to talk about this little lens. It is the Voigtlander 35mm f2 Leica M mount Ultron lens. It's gorgeous, it looks retro, and the images that it produces are classic. So little Leica M mount lenses, who are they for? Well, they're for those who shoot Leica M cameras, such as the M8, M9, M10, and all the variants in between. If you shoot film, maybe you're shooting a Leica M6, Leica M7, Leica MP. But this lens can also be used on almost any mirrorless camera made today. Cameras like the Leica SL, which it's a natural fit for, the Panasonic S1. Um, cameras like the Sony A series, A7, A9, uh, the Nikon Z6, Z7, the Canon EOS R. All of these cameras via adapters can use these little tiny jewel-like lenses and they are a treat to use. But this one here from Voigtlander is small, it's tiny, and it's built to look like a lens that was made in the 1950s. All metal construction, it's the smallest 35 millimeter f2 lens currently in production and yes it is tiny the lens hood which is an option is all metal it's really really nice and i have one for mine in fact this lens was sent to me by stephen gandy over at camerequest.com he wanted me to check it out maybe six seven weeks ago and by the time i was done uh testing it out i said i want this lens so i made it mine um, I now own the lens, I liked it that much. Uh, Voigtlander always has a way of coming out with some charming lenses. Now in the past, they've had some that were kind of stinkers, uh, and they've had some that were beautiful. Current lenses from Voigtlander that I think are amazing are lenses like the 40 f1.2 in M or Sony E-mount, FE I should say, because it's a full frame lens. The Voigtlander 50 1.2 Nocton, again, it's an M-mount or E-mount. I've reviewed all of these lenses on my website and even here on YouTube. I also like the 35 f1.2 uh, version 2. I own that lens as well. And also I have on hand the new 21mm f3.5. It is also in the vintage line, the color scope R, and I am now evaluating that lens, but it's looking really, really good, and I'm shooting it on the Panasonic S1. Now I've spoken in video here about the Panasonic S1 and I love it, I own it. That's the body I use today to shoot these kind of lenses on. Um, while the body is nice and big, it offers a great grip, it feels solid. Putting these little manual focus lenses on creates a really, really nice camera setup. But I love manual focus and this little lens is manual focus only. You're not going to get any autofocus from this lens, but what you will get is a very charming character coming from the lens without giving up sharpness or detail. For example, the Leica 35mm Summicron Aspherical is a $3,000 or more lens, and this one is not too far off from it, but there are differences. The Leica is going to render in a more analytical, dare I say, a little bit of a sterile way uh, and a cooler color temperature. The Voigtlander is going to render in a still a sharp way, but a more rounder way, right? A little bit of classic mojo mixed in with the modern vibe. It's not analytical in any, in any way, and this is a good thing. I love lenses with character above all else. It's a fact. Sharpness does not make an image. We make the image. And when I use a lens like this little Voigtlander on any camera I, I choose to shoot it on, um, it motivates me, and that's what I like to look for in a camera product, whether it's a camera body or a lens. But this little Voigtlander is beautiful. Now, I've been shooting it, and I posted my review, as I said earlier. I use a Novoflex adapter on the SL and S1 to mount these M-mount lenses. It's not the cheapest you can get, and it's not the most expensive you can get. But it's, it's a, a solid adapter, it fits well, it fits perfectly actually, and it does the job. 
Now, why would I shoot these lenses on a Panasonic S1 or even a Leica SL? Because as I said earlier, it makes the cameras even smaller, it makes them handle even better, and you have total control over your images. And a 35 millimeter lens is a pretty popular choice. There's so many to choose from. There's the Zeiss 35 f2.8 that I reviewed many, many years ago. Now that's a small lens, but it's a little bigger than this one. And it's not going to give you that f2 aperture. You're going to get more of the Zeiss color pop compared to the Voigtlander color. Um, but I still see greater value in the Ultron. Now Voigtlander also makes the 35 f1.7 and that is a beautiful lens, has a little more biting contrast to it and maybe a little more pop of color. It's larger and has uh, the all metal build and the scalloped focus ring. I love that lens as well. It creates some beautiful images whether you're shooting it on an M, a Sony, or something like the S1. But there's so many lenses in the 35 millimeter realm that we can go for. Um, but this little lens here does have some special qualities to it. It has character, it has mojo, it has um, that vibe that I really dig. It's not full on classic or vintage, so it's not soft or, or mushy and it doesn't have busy bokeh, but it has sharpness, just enough sharpness. It has really smooth bokeh and it just has that look. And, and if I'm shooting it on the S1, say at super high ISO, let's say 12,800 or even 51,000, it reminds me of shooting Tri-X back in the day when I used to shoot an MP. And uh, this lens really converts well to black and white because it's not a high contrast lens, it's not a low contrast lens, it's kind of a mid contrast lens. Um, so it's beautiful for black and white images. I just wanted to tell you guys about this lens. It's a beautiful little lens, comes in at only $799. And again, you can use it on virtually any mirrorless camera via an adapter. I'm also uh, going to be reviewing the 21 F3.5. Uh, that should be coming out within a week, my review. So uh, just wanted to make a quick video about this lens. My copy came from Stephen Gandy over at CameraQuest.com. He has every Voigtlander lens you can imagine. And I think, what do I own now? I actually bought the 21, uh, the 35 Ultron here, the one I'm talking about. I own the 35 F1 II because it offers kind of a dreamy classic look that I sometimes love. And that's another great black and white lens. I own the 50 F1 II in M mount. Uh, and I used to own the 40 F1 II, but I sold it when I acquired the 50. And I'm soon going to be reviewing the new 75 F1.5 from Voigtlander, and that lens looks amazing. It's not out yet, but I'm hoping very soon. As soon as I get it, I will let you guys know. If you like this video, thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much for being here. Check out stevehuffphoto.com, and I'll put links in the description below to anything I talked about here if you want more information. I'll see you next time. Bye.